skinny without going too deep. It's called religion or New Age movement. Western man has made himself bereft of the rites and rituals, the rites of passage, the shamanic methods for dealing with the buildup of his dark psychic content. As a result, he is patently psychologically arrested. His avoidance condemns mankind and the earth. It engenders psychotic and sadistic leaders who are able to play upon his fears and lower instincts ad infinitum. Christianity and these organizations, these organized religions, as well as the corporate dominance of governments, they're there to erase your spirit of rebellion. That's their modus operandi. That's why they exist. They don't exist to take you to God or to heaven. There's very few enlightened people in Christianity, if you haven't noticed. There's very few enlightened people anywhere in the world, including on the banks of the Ganges. But the, what there is is conformity, violence, subservience to tradition, and untold sadism to the self and to others. And there is the obvious control and, and subjugation of the true spirit of rebellion. Aldous Huxley, and he should know because he was one of the people devising ways to keep people down, he said, it is perfectly possible for a man to be out of prison and yet not free, to be under no physical constraint and yet to be psychologically captive, compelled to think, feel and act as the representatives of the national state or of some private interest within the nation wants them to think, feel and act. The nature of psychological compulsion is such that those who are act under constraint remain under the impression that they are acting of their own initiative. That's key. The victim of mind manipulation does not know that he is a victim. To him, the walls of his prison are invisible, and he believes himself to be free. That he is not free is only apparent to other people. His servitude is strictly objective. You see, anyone who's had to deal, anybody here has actually had to deal with psychotic people or schizophrenics or people, it's very difficult to, treat, to tell those people that their thinking is deranged. They think they're perfectly normal. Partly, as I said, they've adjusted to reality as they see it, so they're not wholly to blame. But even in the worst uh, chronic uh, syndrome, you will find that you're wasting your time. You can roll out your soul like a red carpet, and they'll walk right on it. Because they are thinking, you're the dummy. dummy. You're the dumbass. You got it wrong. Eric Fromm. Is anatomy of human destructiveness a book I wish everybody would read. The sick individual finds himself at home with all other similarly sick individuals. The whole culture is geared to this kind of pathology. The result is that the average individual does not experience the separateness and isolation the fully schizophrenic person feels. He feels at ease amongst those who suffer from the same deformation. In fact, it is the fully sane person who feels isolated in the insane society. And he may suffer so much from the incapacity to communicate that it is he who may become psychotic. And haven't we all experienced that? From the time we were born, I assume everyone in this room has experienced that. And I would also say this, that if you are sane enough to see the insanity, that's a damn good sign. Because it means you're not insane. So as bad as it is, it is to feel bad about the things that are happening, look at the bright side, you can see it. It's they live. How do they do it? How, do they, how does the control of the mind, the governmenta, happen? Frank Herbert said, fear is the mind killer. Right from here, Los Angeles, the magician and occultist Manly Palmer Hall said, to repress rebellion is to maintain the status quo, a condition which binds the mortal creature in a state of intellectual or physical slavery. But it is impossible to chain man merely by slaving his body. The mind also must be held. And to accomplish this, fear is the accepted weapon. The common man must fear life, fear death, fear God, fear the devil, and fear most his overlords, the keepers of his destiny. It's the master slave. And it begins from the moment that you enter school. The teacher is a slave of somebody else. He's going to treat you like a slave. The false teacher. Dr. Michael Elner, a hypnotist, said, just look at us. Everything is backwards. Everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health. Lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the major media destroys information, and religion destroys spirituality. But you know, we have funded and paid for teachers and churches, and we've built leviathans running around to find out what is enlightenment. We bought into every kind of nonsense to find out what is God, what is tradition, what is enlightenment. And do you know something? It might boil down to something very simple. Try hard tight concept of God the Son and the Holy Spirit, we sense something that is a lie. And that's something the time has come for the revelation of what that lie is about. God, we have pretty much a clear understanding of what that is. 
Jesus, the Christ, or the Son, or the Solar King, or the Agent, the Minister, okay, the Comforter, the Presence, the sort of humanoid. We kind of got to fix on that. But they always put before us the ambivalence of the famous Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, they even call it. And they symbolize it by the dove. It's very vague. Some traditions connected with Sophia, with, with Mother Mary. But again, very vague. They want to scale back the whole feminine concept totally. But now we can understand, in my work I emphasize this, that the Holy Spirit, that third part of the Trinity, is nothing more than you. Is the self. The Holy Spirit of the Trinity equals, ladies and gentlemen, the self. That is you. If you're in selfhood, by the way, that's the footnote. If you're in egohood, well then it doesn't apply. Or it only applies a little bit. But the person who's in selfhood, because we can see, and I call it the magical trinity. The magical trinity is the universal intelligence, which Christians have called God. The men and women are the sons of God. That's us. But that is pretty much a useless circuit if you don't have the final component, which is the person themselves. What good is it if you don't have the self at the, you know, as part of this, as the recipient of all of that? So I'm here to tell you that that's what that is. And that's why we don't have selfhood. And that's why we have every kind of conceivable agency in this world operating to make sure that you're neither independent nor in, in a state of selfhood. Now look again at these books that were cast out of the Bible. Why they might have been, why that might have happened. Because in the Gospel of Thomas, the teacher, Jesus is saying, he who blasphemes against the Father, and this is known to Christians, but he says, he who blasphemes against the Father will be forgiven. And he who blasphemes against the Son will also be forgiven. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either on earth or in heaven. Bernard Hart said also, we can accept that God becomes man to save man. But we can never seem to accept man becoming God to save himself. And I'll leave you with this from the Hopi elders. All that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration because we are the ones we have been waiting for.